For today's video, we're going to take a look at everything that was included in today's patch. And I'll leave a link to the home base status report in the description if you want to go check it out. First thing I want to point out is that the dungeon mode is going to be returning on April the 4th at 8 p.m. Eastern. Which is kind of weird because normally we don't get updates on Saturdays. But yeah, dungeon mode is going to be returning. And as of right now, I'm not sure if they made any changes to it. But the description that was in the status report says fight monsters, dodge traps, gear up and descend into the depths to confront the raging evil below. They say there are weapons and heroes to recruit along the way, magical keys, a deep and dark labyrinth, golden coins, sounds like it's time to do some exploring. So it sounds like it's going to be very similar to the previous dungeon event. And for those who don't know, dungeons are a great way to farm gold as well as tickets. And they said we can recruit some weapons and heroes along the way. So as soon as it's available, we'll be sure to check it out and see if there's anything new. But yeah, like I said, it's going to be available on April the 4th, which is this Saturday. And that was the first thing I wanted to point out. Next thing I wanted to point out were the changes made to Founder's Weapons. They finally got the new six perk that we mentioned in the last update. And all of them got new perks except for the Founder's Blazing Mazamune. That still has the same six perk that it always had. But the Nocturno has a new six perk where whenever you hit an enemy with this weapon, it's going to mark them as a target, stacking with each hit. You know what? Let's go ahead and check this out. So like I said, when it comes to the Nocturno, whenever you hit an enemy, it's going to mark them as a target. Whenever you reload, it's going to make each marked target explode in a half tile radius. We're actually going to go ahead and try testing it out just to see what it looks like. See if you can see if the mark. Oh, you can see the little bomb on top of their head. And they say when you reload, okay, let's go ahead and reload. Oh, oh my goodness. What? Oh, this is OP people. The new Nocturnal is incredible. Let's go ahead and try it again. I, I think that's the way you're gonna wanna use it is, wait, are they throwing bees again? What? The lobbers are throwing bees again, okay. But yeah, I think that's the way you're gonna wanna use it. You're gonna wanna try to shoot all of the enemies at least once. Make sure they all get marked. And then once you got all of them marked, go ahead and reload. And look at that. Oh my good, that is incredible. I feel like that automatically makes the Nocturno one of the best assault rifles in the game at the moment. Without a doubt, this perk is nasty. Okay, let's go ahead and try it with the quick shot. When it comes to the Founders quick shot, whenever you hit an enemy, it's gonna grant a 1.7% increase in weapon damage and 1% increase in reload speed for two seconds, and that can stack up to 25 times. And that's only gonna last for about two seconds. So you're actually gonna wanna spray it in order to really increase that damage. You're gonna wanna try to spray it as quickly as possible. And again, whenever you get a hit, it's gonna also increase your reload speed. So here's what the normal reload speed looks like about two to three seconds and here's what the reload speed looks like after you get a bunch of hits with it about two seconds so it is a little bit faster and again it is going to increase your damn oh yeah it definitely feels better than it used to people so when it comes to the founders quick shot you're going to want to try to spray as quickly as possible to increase your damage as well as your reload speed and it definitely feels a lot better than it did compared to the last time i used it so the more times you hit enemies with this weapon the more damage it deals and the faster the reload speed is. And when it comes to the Founders Deconstructor, whenever you reload, it's going to increase your damage and that can stack up to five times. So your first five shots aren't going to deal extra damage, but as soon as you reload, you'll get that extra damage buff. You get an extra damage buff for every bullet you reload. So if you reload the entire magazine, you're going to get the biggest damage buff and all that extra damage is going to be applied to the next target you hit. And you can tell when it's active because when you reload, you'll see this little light at the end of it. So once it's gone, you see there's no light at the end. But once you reload and get that buff, you see there's a little light at the end. So I think when it comes to the deconstructor, you're going to want to make sure you shoot enemies who have little health. And you're going to want to make sure you empty the magazine in order to get the biggest damage buff. And once you reload all five bullets, all that extra damage is going to be applied to the next target you hit. We did almost 300,000 that time. Definitely a lot more than we were doing at first. So I think with this new six perk, the deconstructor is also going to be a lot better than it used to be. You just want to make sure that you empty the magazine first and then reload all five bullets at once and save that very first shot for Miss Monsters and Hus that have a lot of health. And when it comes to the Founder's drum roll, every 10th round fired is going to increase your weapon damage by 15%. And that can stack up to four times. 
So you can deal up to a total of 60% extra damage with this new sixth perk. And it'll only go away after you reload. So I think, oh, there's one. There's another. Oh, it, ma it makes a noise whenever it triggers. So you can actually hear it when you get that increase in damage. And when we have a magazine size perk on it, we get a total of 75 rounds. So we're going to get 35 rounds with 60% extra damage. So our last 35 rounds with the magazine size perk are going to deal 60% more damage than the first 10 rounds that we shot. And again, this new six perk is definitely going to make the founders drum roll a lot better as well. And like I said earlier, they didn't make any changes to the founders blazing Mazamune, but, but yeah, just wanted to briefly show you all what the new founders weapons six perk looks like. Let me know what you all think about them in the comments below. There's also a couple of new bows. Yes, we got more bows people. One of them is called Nightfire, and this one's going to be available in the weekly store starting April the 1st at 8 p.m. And here's what the new Nightfire looks like up close. The description that came with this says, it fires an arrow that drops over time, damage range and velocity increase with charge time. So we'll be sure to check that out as soon as the weekly store resets. Miss Bunny Penny's also going to be returning this week. And she has Plasma Pulse Decoy and Bull Rush, and her standard and commander perk decreases the Plasma Pulse energy cost. And normally by the time your abilities cool down, your energy will have refilled. So not really a useful perk in my opinion, but this is what she looks like when she's fully upgraded. And you'll be able to get it from the event store when it resets this Friday, April the 3rd at 8 p.m. And she's gonna be available in the event store until it refreshes June 19th. And on April 4th, we're also going to get new llamas. The spy llamas are going to be going away and the pirate llamas are going to be returning. So if you're missing any spy weapons, you're going to want to try to get them before 8 p.m. on April 4th. And that pirate llama is going to cost 500 adventure tickets. So the tickets are also going to reset. And this pirate llama is going to include steampunk weapons. They didn't tell us which weapons it's going to include, but they did include the steam roller as well as the steam piston, the Bon Voyage, the Steam Thrasher and the Baron in the picture that was in the home base status report. And this isn't my favorite weapon set, but I would say the Double Boiler and Steam Thrasher are probably my favorite steampunk weapons. After that, I would recommend getting the Baron because you can put three movement speed perks on it. And those are probably my favorite steampunk weapons. I guess Cloudburst is okay as well, but not really a huge fan of all of the other steampunk weapons. But again, they didn't really tell us which ones are going to be available, but apparently you'll be able to get some of these steampunk weapons from the new Pirate Llama. And again, that's going to be available on April the 4th at 8 p.m. Not only will you be able to get steampunk weapons from the Pirate Llama, but you'll also be able to get the Pirate Heroes, which include Buccaneer Jonesy, who I don't really use that often, as well as Privateer Hype, who's definitely useful when it comes to clubs. You can also get Crossbones Barrett, which is a hero that I do use often because he gives coconuts, which can increase your health as well as your damage. So you're gonna to wanna to try to get him. And it should also include Swashbuckler Kill Hall. And I don't really use her that often either. And we may also get Blakebeard the Blackhearted in hybrid, or they may end up being available in the weekly and event store. But you should be able to get these four pirate heroes from the Pirate Llamas. As soon as they let us know all of the Pirate Llamas content, I'll be sure to let you all know, or we may just open up some Pirate Llamas when they become available. But yeah, I'll leave a link to all of our pirate hero and weapon gameplays in the description if you want to go check them out. They also made some changes to the core llamas, which are the llamas you can buy from the x-ray tab. They're going to be adding the compression burster, vendor tech seeker, vacuum two bow, and the scavenger bow, which is another new bow. So the new scavenger bow is already available in the core llamas. Luckily, we had one in one of our llamas. So we're going to go ahead and get this real quick. Take a look at it. But yeah, they added the compression burster vendor tech seeker vacuum two bow and scavenger bow to the core llamas and here's what the scrap shot looks like up close and we'll try to upload some gameplay of it later today but the description that came with it says that it has reduced durability but it's much cheaper to craft so it's not going to require as many materials compared to some other bows but yeah that's how you get the other new bow you'll be able to get it from the core llamas which are any of the x-ray llamas so you may want to keep an eye out on the rewards that they give if you want to try to get the new scavenger bow there was also a new smg that was leaked which wasn't included in the home base status report this one's called the papa bear and the description that came with this says mid-range assault weapon with a high capacity magazine and a lateral kick its shooting profile makes it ideal for clearing groups of nearby enemies and mobile engagements and that's what the new Papa Bear looks like. 
But again, they didn't mention it in the patch notes, so we're not going to get it within the next couple of weeks. But just wanted to give you all a heads up. We're also going to get a new SMG. And they also gave us a heads up as to what we can expect to see next week. On April the 10th, Rabbit Raider Jones is going to be returning. Definitely one of the best sniper heroes in Save the World. And I would recommend getting him. And Cottontail Eagle Eye is also going to be returning that week as well. And I don't really use her that often because her standard and commander perk don't really deal a whole lot of damage. But yeah, next week, all we're going to get is Cottontail Eagle Eye and Rabbit Raider Jonesy. But yeah, that sums up everything that was included in today's home base status report. Let me know what you think about dungeons returning as well as the new bows. And let me know what you think about the changes made to the founder's weapons in the comments below. Anyways, I hope y'all found the video useful and thanks for watching.